You're listening to the Dream and Achieve Project, and I am your host, Brent Fierstead. Funny thing happened to me on my way to true happiness and success as a fitness trainer and entrepreneur. I made every mistake in the book. But there's one thing that sets me apart. I focus on goals in front of me, charging ahead, and never looking back. This podcast will help you fight through the struggles life hands you so you're equipped to persevere. I'll introduce you to leaders and entrepreneurs who have made their dreams come true and are willing to share their secrets to true success and happiness. Let's go! Alright guys, welcome back to the Dream and Achieve Project. This is episode 5. I am here with Chaz, or Charles Lindsay. Chaz was his nickname. Is that your nickname? or? Yeah, nickname. <laughs> it's funny, I went through phases, so it's like Charles was, I used to be a massage therapist, that was like the professional name. Growing up, it was Charlie, went to Charles for like the, the massage field, and then Chaz just kind of stuck, and that's been the nickname ever since. Chaz, I remember that from back in the day, man. When we first met, you were doing YouTube stuff, and I think it was like, I don't know if you created this company, or it was like Motivate, Motivate with an 8. Um, you remember that? Oh, that one. Yeah, that was, um, was that someone else's? I, still, I have one of their, yeah, it was someone else's company. It was a Facebook group okay. and I don't, I don't remember what was going on with that. And I bought their shirt and I cut off the sleeves. I still work out in that shirt. Uh, but yeah, it was a whole like fitness motivation thing, but man, that was like, we've known each other for like, years or something like that. Maybe yeah. I mean, longer. I started YouTube probably shoot probably 11 or 12 years ago. So, and I think that's when I first saw you kind of getting into the fitness game if you want to give a little background as far as you know what you do and kind of where you started from that would help the listeners out too yeah um man there's been so many phases <laughs> like you've you've been there for each phase you've seen us go through so it originally started with um doing massage therapy full time the typical situation where i loved what i did for my clients especially you as a personal trainer right because personal trainers and massage therapists we have the exact same um uh, game like we get that reward from physically helping somebody we deal with clientele and scheduling and that kind of stuff yeah. and i was doing that full-time loved what i did could not stand working for the man that was the one part that was just like i cannot do that anymore and so at the time i was involved with p90x insanity doing those home programs and i was doing some youtube clips back then i think i had like four or five hundred subscribers and i was so pumped about that and I did that whole world and with that company, ended up quitting my job, running with that company. I started doing my own massage business. So I was renting space and booking my own clients for my first time in my career. And I did that for several years. And then I ended up transitioning, getting completely out of the direct sales world and just wanted to develop my own business, my own company. Um, cause even when you get into the world of direct sales, they, they promote, you could be your own CEO, right? But you don't own the product. You don't own the brand. And that was a huge issue with me. I want to own whatever I'm going to put my hands on. And yeah. that's when we got into the, the world of Amazon and eBay and flipping stuff from garage sales. And it just kind of blew up from there. Yeah. So talk a little bit about your business now. I mean, obviously you got your warehouse here. You you started in your garage from when I was watching some YouTube videos here and there. You had your garage just jam packed. I remember seeing a bunch of boxes and <laughs> you had like pallets coming in, and it was just crazy. Yep. Like, oh, how's this dude doing this? And now you have uh, you went to another warehouse, and now you're in this bigger warehouse. What exactly do you do? We are. So primarily we run Amazon and eBay and the business models are about 50, 50. We don't favor one or, or over the other. We like to diversify our income. And so from there, um, we originally started in our, in our garage and a lot of people see where we're at now. They see the warehouse and they're like, wow, I wish I could do that too. But they fail to re realize, and this is why I love doing YouTube because I documented the whole thing from day one that I started doing Amazon and eBay. And you can go back on our YouTube channel, watch these old videos and our vlogs. And we were working out of our garage for the first two years. Yeah, we people see the, uh, the glamour, the glorified stuff on Instagram and, you know, all your happiness and your celebrations, but they don't see the hard grinding stuff. Lately. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, like you and I, we're, we're on Instagram a lot, watching each other's content and DMing each other. And it's like, I've seen when you're posting at midnight and you're in the garage, but 
you know, the grind, like those, those are the moments that make or break a business. And that's kind of where we start was those first two years. We got a little 600 square foot office space as our first upgrade in the same building, just a different unit, um, two units down. And from there, we pretty much outgrew it. And this spot opened up. The previous tenant was doing a dog training session out of here. <laughs> and so she didn't need this much space and she ended up leaving. And I'm like, well, it's only 400 bucks extra per month and we get twice as much space. Yeah. So we have a thousand square feet here on the floor. We have a nice loft where we keep all of our eBay inventory. And then we've got this little like 400 square foot um, extra space we had. So we opened up a clothing retail shop nice. and we just take all of our extra stuff and customer returns. We just throw it in the shop and sell it out of there. That's sweet. That's kind of everything in a nutshell right now. Yeah. I kind of got into the uh, resale a little bit here and there, you know, I flip gym equipment every now and then on the side when I'm, you know, not busy with clients. There's a huge market for that, especially if you know what you're looking for, like that hammer strength stuff, things like that. Oh my gosh. Really flip that. I remember driving to Iowa, um, you know, it was probably a three hour drive for me, but it was worth it. I bought three hammer strength pieces of equipment for 1500 bucks and I flipped them for 45, I want to say. So <laughs> that's amazing. That was definitely worth it as far as that. Obviously, you got to load it and all that stuff, but yeah, me, I, I like hard work and uh, and you as well. So, um, talk a little bit about how social media has helped you. I mean, obviously, um, you got the YouTube, you got the Instagram, you got all that going. You can also uh, plug yourself too, as far as uh, you know, your name on Instagram and things like that. Yeah, it, the social media. Video, it's, I think we all start the same way. It's like you start by just documenting behind the scenes about your life and you have that one subscriber or, or even zero. We all start with zero. And I don't think any of us ever expect it to grow to a certain level. And that's kind of yeah. what happened with us. Uh, we just crossed, we're getting ready to hit 105,000 on YouTube. Man, that's awesome. It's right. Instagram games like almost 30. So it's a little bit of a gap, but that's just kind of the, the different. Uh, thing with that but YouTube I mean I did my first video I was three weeks into my Amazon uh, journey because we started Amazon before eBay I was three weeks in I did about fifteen hundred dollars in sales and I held up my phone I didn't go fancy at all right mm -hmm. I just held up my phone and said hey guys my name's Chaz this is a new channel dedicated for my reselling journey I've only done fifteen hundred dollars in sales I probably made five hundred bucks net profit at that time and I was just pumped and I had ordered this big pallet of liquidated, liquidated toys. And so I literally just from my phone, opened up the box of toys, showed people how I was doing it on Amazon. And that first subscriber hit subscribe. And then it went to five and 10 and 15 and 20. And then did a couple mini viral videos teaching people how to do Amazon shipments. Cause no one was doing that type of content back then. Yeah, I was one of the first ones to do that video. And that thing went, viral and that's where we got our first couple thousand subs yeah that's crazy um i know you're really into giving i want to share a story that you did for my family and myself <laughs> if that was fun find. that was fun so we were looking for this ryan giant egg and i couldn't find it anywhere it was sold out and you know i saw chaz posted a picture of uh, a bunch of them you know he must have he must have got a lot and i was like hey man where'd you get those at because i was looking for them forever and he's like, oh, just give me your uh, address. And I was like, oh, all right. And then come find out, he sent me one over Christmas because my kid wanted it for Christmas. And he sent the Black Friday one, which was amazing. Uh, I appreciate it a lot, man. And honestly, that was his favorite toy. So for me, it was kind of like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, that uh, was uh, too great. Yeah, that was awesome, man. Um, and now you're into giving as far as I think you're doing some kind of course on YouTube, right? You're giving away FBA, uh, information. Yeah. So a lot of these guys in the FBA and eBay field, they'll, they'll charge you 250 bucks to 500 bucks to do just a basic beginner's course, which I, I mean, with the audience we have now, there's people that would pay. I can make a crap ton of money if I did that, but I figured, you know what? I love the Gary V mentality of just give it all away for free yeah. and people will, I mean, you can't build more trust than that just by giving it all away for free. The jab, um, jab, right hook. Yeah, exactly. I love that book. And so that's, that was one of my methods with this. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take the 247 price tag off of it. I'm going to upload it to YouTube and just make it a download for free. 
And yeah. so we're four episodes in. I have lit on my, I have a six foot whiteboard next to me. That's my mastermind board. I've yeah. got 25 videos on there. So I've got, I've done four so far. And I'm, I took a week off over the last week because it's a lot of work to do. Yeah. Uh, my editor is amazing. He's putting all the visual graphics on there. I'm putting in the time of recording the stuff, doing the research ahead of time. And we're getting ready to bust out the last 20, uh, 21 videos are going to be busted out over the next two weeks. So with that, are you going to eventually create like an online course or something with it? Or is it kind of just going to be a, a free, you know, YouTube course? Yeah, it's pretty much just a freebie. What I'm doing is we have six modules that makes up the 25 videos. So module one is uploaded straight to YouTube for free. And then we're going to start collecting emails and it's still going to be free, but I'm going to have to create the landing page that's drop your email in here if you want to get the rest of it. Um, that's where it's going to be built out in a nice little course fashion on our website. And then down the road, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to go down the road of like doing mentoring or if I'm, cause we don't do really any mentoring. I don't have a course. I don't have anything like that, but down the road, I think we might try to develop something depending on how the market is. Gotcha. What are some recommendations you would give, uh, as far as business within social media? Obviously we just kind of talked about it, giving away some free information as far as FBA, um, mm -hmm. what would you suggest for people that are just starting out kind of in your area? What would you suggest for those people to do? For social media specifically, the biggest one I've realized is don't necessarily, it, it's, it's a double edged sword. You can chase trendy topics and get views that way and get subscribers, whether you're building Instagram, YouTube, your blog, whatever it may be, you can chase the trends, but I'm noticing when there's so many people on trends if you find ways to do if you just branch off a little bit in a different direction that no one else is really focusing on i found that that's where i'm i'm engaging most of my audience yeah. so for example in our field right now with amazon there's something called retail arbitrage and this is the <laughs> it's okay uh this is when you go into Walmart, Target, Kohl's, et cetera, all these retail stores, you buy stuff typically on clearance and then you sell it back on Amazon for a profit. Yep. So retail arbitrage, specifically Walmart retail arbitrage videos are the trend in, in our field. Everyone's doing Walmart retail arbitrage videos and that's where a lot of subscribers are going and watching and viewing. So I'm taking a little bit of a different approach and I'm doing online arbitrage videos. And that's one of our series coming up. Yes. So it's still the arbitrage topic, which is very popular right now, but it's going to be tackling it in a different direction where there's not a lot of people talking about it. Nice. So one of my biggest tips I can give is follow kind of the big topic of whatever the trend may be. And this is going to be different for each, you know, you could be running a phishing Instagram yeah. account and a phishing YouTube channel and you have your own topics within that. So go where the trends are, but try to find your own unique twist to it has been a big one for me. And then the, of course, with anything, it's consistency. Yeah. Consistency. Right? Just like, it's just like fitness. Yeah. yeah. You can't, you can't work out when you feel like it or every now and then and expect to get great results. Yeah. You work out consistently and that's when your body gets into shape. So consistency has been absolutely crucial. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, within your YouTube videos and your Instagram, I see you going to, you know, like Nike, Goodwill, places like this. What is your favorite store to source and why? If, oh man, it may not be the most profitable, but my absolute favorite is Nike right now. Yeah. I just, I love, I mean, yeah. you're the same way. Yeah. yeah, You're the same way when you love shoes. Like I love shoes before I even knew what selling online was. Yeah. Right? I love sneakers. I love athletic shoes. So I was going into Nike even for my own purchases way before I was selling stuff. Yeah. And Nike. And now the fact that I can walk into a Nike store, I can spend 1500 or $2,000 and I can expect to make a thousand dollar net profit from that one load. Yep. Um, plus their shoes and they're just fun to flip. Uh, it's been hands down my favorite one. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you do it, man. When I go in there, I'm not, I mean, I have the mindset of flipping things, not like you, because I'm not running a business like that, but I go in there and I'm trying to get something for myself or my son or my, you know, I don't know how you can just get things for business, but obviously that's what you do. Um, are you going in there and looking for stuff for yourself too when you're in there? Or oh, every time. Yeah. Trista, my wife, if you're watching the video, you can see she's back here. <laughs> she she doesn't necessarily like me flipping Nikes because I have this thing and I do the same thing. I also love Funko Pops. 
So I love to flip Funko Pops. I love to keep them for myself. I mean, you guys can't see, but I've got this whole wall of Funkos right in front of me. Um, I go in with the mindset of if I flip enough, I can keep a pair for myself and I basically get for free. That's how my mind works. Yeah. It doesn't agree, but that's okay. That's, <laughs> that's, that's how I justify it. <laughs> so I know that if I go in and I get, you know, even if I, on a low end day, if I just get 250 bucks worth of net profit to flip, yep. yeah, I'm going to spend 40, 50, 60 bucks on myself and get, get a nice pair. That's funny that you say it like that because my wife's like, where do you keep getting all this gym equipment? You know, I'll flip some and then I'll keep some for myself for my, my home gym. She's like, how do you keep affording this? You know, and it's, and that it's that game right there. You flip something and you, you put it into your garage or your gym, you know? Exactly. Yeah, so that's awesome. I just, they just dropped this, uh, GameStop dropped this remake of a 1990s edition Ninja Turtles set. Yeah. So, I mean, the detail on these figures are just crazy cool. And they were 90 bucks on GameStop to buy when they dropped. And they're all completely sold out now. They're selling for $200 plus on Amazon eBay. And I bought one to flip and one to keep. So I'm at break even, but I get to keep my set for free. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like the real, uh, I remember back in the day, the, like the real skin turtles, like it felt like rubbery. Exactly. Yeah. So they, they did the remake. I'll have to show you these, but yeah. they're, they're pretty cool looking. That's crazy. Um, what are you doing as far as self-development books? Are you reading uh, books? What are some you can give uh, to the listeners that you really like and that have helped you? And maybe some mentors that you have looked up to as far as, uh, I don't know, flipping business. I don't know if there's mentors in the flipping business because it's kind of new. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, as far as books, I mean, you and I, you know, we go way back like 10 plus years. So you've seen like when I post about the books, that I've been reading stuff. Um, the, the foundational books, I mean, there's hundreds, if not thousands of business personal development books out there, but still at my core, the ones that made the biggest difference were Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. That was a game changer for me because I used to be the one that I would try to do these big actions every now and then and expect a big result from it. And I kept wondering why I didn't get it. Yep. The compound effect. I read that and it's all premised on you do the small daily actions. They're not going to be big, fancy, extravagant things, but you do these small daily actions. That is what compounds into the larger big result. And of course it takes time. It takes months and years for that result to happen. Yes. Same thing with your fitness, right? You don't eat a salad and then wake up the next day and be like, cool, I got my six pack. I'm good to go. That's where people struggle, man. They think uh, yeah. they're putting in the hard work in the gym. They're going to see the results, but honestly, the results are coming from outside of the gym. What are you eating? Are you exactly. Eating? So compound effect was definitely one of my favorite ones. Um, I'm actually do. I haven't read it in a few years. I, I try to reread my favorites every, every couple of years. Cause I feel like with personal development books, you're going to get something different each time you read it. If, even if it's once every year, because yeah. you're in a different phase of life, you're in a different phase of business. So I feel like I need to go back and reread that again because the last time I read it was probably three, four years ago. Yeah. And I'm in a completely different business model than I was three, four years ago. So I think that'd be a good one to reread. Um, Miracle Morning is is always a classic. That's a really great one as well because I've become a fan. I do not enjoy waking up early at all, but I've become a fan of getting that morning routine done because you just feel fantastic all day. Yeah. And Trista can tell you, if I don't wake up and take care of me first, I'm a monster all day. <laughs> um, so taking care of yourself first thing in the morning, Miracle Morning is a great book for that. Um, four hour work week, huge, huge uh, benefit if you actually start to implement some of those tactics. And I love it because everyone reads it and they're like, can you really work four hours per week? Yeah. And I don't think it's necessarily about the physical time frame about four hours per week. It's about learning to outsource and delegate so that you focus your time on your crucial tasks. Yeah. That, that was another game changer book for, for me as well. Yeah. There's a huge saying out there. I forget how it goes, but it's something like, you know, someone might be putting in 16 hours a day, but the same person doing the same job is putting in eight hours and getting in more effort and time and quality over that person that's putting over the 16 hours. So it's what you do with exactly. the time. We all have the same amount of time in the day. Like you said, you got to get up early and get your workout in or you're probably not going to do it. So it's all about just planning out your day. And like you said, you got that big whiteboard. You're planning out your basically your whole business. Uh, so writing things down, visualizing, 
it and doing it is huge, not just talking about it, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. What is uh, one piece of advice you'd give people as far as trying to get into this business or starting this business like you did yourself? What would you say to those people? Uh, especially with the resale game, the biggest thing I've been getting, I don't know what it's been about the last like seven to 10 days of my DMs on Instagram. I'm getting all kinds of messages all along the same lines of one of them was, and I, I don't mean to call anyone out, but I want to bring this up because if people are, are working out of a certain mindset, you're not going to make it in this business. And the yeah. mindset is one of the messages was I went in and I tried to do retail arbitrage for the first time today. I did it for three hours and I couldn't find anything. So I quit. And I, I, I had, I, it took me so long to come up with a, a nice reply and not sound like a complete jerk. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I, I said, if you only put in three hours yeah. to try to launch a business and you quit, this is not going to be the right mo model for you. And it's not the right model for everybody, but for those that want to get into reselling stuff, whether it's thrift stores and garage sales, you can go down the whole wholesale or private label route where you're buying stuff from China and putting your brand on it. There's all kinds of models within it. The biggest piece of advice is be willing to put in time. And for, for me, when I coach people now, it's, I tell them you need to be willing to sacrifice at least bare minimum six months. Same thing as fitness, right? It doesn't happen overnight. You got to dedicate at least six months of being consistent with a certain business model before you can make a judgment call of, is this just not going to be the right fit for me? Am I doing something wrong? That's when you can start to question things. Yeah. Not after your first day or your first three hour trip. That's <laughs> not how it works. Or even better is I'll get messages of people like, hey, I saw your electronics video. I love to flip electronics out of Goodwills. And I did a video on it, which went viral. And I get blown up all the time. People are like, hey, I saw your electronics video. I bought a few VCRs. I tried to sell them, but I had to ship it out USPS instead of FedEx. And I lost money on the sale. I'm not going to do electronics anymore. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, that was a learning experience. So you won't do that again. Go yeah. back in the store and buy another one. Try again. It's the practice. It's the practice that, that ultimately teaches you how to do it. Yeah. I, I, I produce YouTube videos teaching them. And as much as we love when subscribers watch our videos, I don't want you watching my videos if you're not going to do anything in practice. Yep, exactly. Right? It's the same thing. Like if you produce fitness content for your, for your audience, yep. you don't want them to be like, okay, cool. He taught me how to do this stuff and how to eat right. I'm just going to continue watching it and not do it myself. <laughs> it, it doesn't bring us any joy as content creators. We like when you guys actually come back and say, Hey, I took your advice. I implemented, I practiced and here was the result. Yeah, for sure. That's what we love. So that's my biggest tip is just get out there and do it. Um, just pr You need to watch some videos, get a basic understanding of how logistically eBay and Amazon work. But once you have that foundation and you kind of have the general uh, gist of how it's going to be as a business, get out there and start buying stuff. Yeah. Buy it, list it, and see what happens. It's all yeah. practice. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, I watched that uh, Goodwill video you did. And I text you, you probably remember saying, oh, you brought your camera in there and videoed it or whatever. <laughs> yep. Um, I literally, I bring, it's on my tripod right now, but I bring my camera in the store and I have to hide, I always wear a hoodie. I have to hide it in my hoodie because Goodwills don't like cameras in their stores. Yeah. And so I always hide it in my hoodie and I bring it out when I'm documenting and I'm showing people what I'm looking at on my phone. Yeah. It's pretty yeah, fun. that definitely helped me that video though. I actually sent out a printer this morning uh, through e eBay and you got to remember, if you are sending this stuff out, like you said, you got to have the shipping costs on there. You got to have the mm -hmm. eBay fees on there, you know, and then what is your ultimate intake on the uh, value after that? But I bought this printer and I bought it for seven bucks, I think. And I just shipped it out for, I think it cost me 35 to ship out, but I marked it for 25 on eBay. So ultimately I sold it for 65. I think my net profit was 48. You know, Heck yeah, man, that's now, where it's at. It's a 10 minutes a day thing where I had time in between clients and, you yeah. know, I kind of do that on the side. My wife gives me crap. She's like, why do you keep buying all this stuff? I said, I'm making money. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it starts and careful. Cause the next thing you know, your garage is full and then you have to get a warehouse cause you keep buying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's you. another thing too, is people are always like, how do I get my spouse on board with the reselling game? And you know how I got this one on board? Told her to quit her Res job. Yeah, results. Yeah. When you can say, hey, babe, I made 
a thousand bucks this week. That's when she was like, okay, let's do this. I'm in. And she's been all, all on board. But before that time, when I was like, Hey, I just made my first hundred dollars. She's like, Oh, good job. Your little like reselling thing. Yeah. And then she went, she, I was self-employed doing massage therapy. So she had a job still. She was waking up at six 30. Our little one, if you're watching the video, our little one was just a baby then. And she had to miss every single morning with him. I was the one that took care of him for that first, you know, couple hours in the day until she came home from lunch. Yeah. And so she was struggling with that part of it being our firstborn. And it ended up getting to the point where I'm like, Hey babe, I made 300 bucks. And she's like, Oh cool. That's, you know, it's pretty good. Yeah. With the first time I was like, Hey, I made a thousand bucks this week. That's when she's like, wait, what? This is like <laughs> legit. You can actually make money doing this. It's and that's how you get your spouse on board's results. Yeah. It's funny you say that. Cause it's kind of, we kind of live almost the same life and a little different, but my wife's a nurse and she works at night and we don't do daycare or anything or any, any of that. So like if she works at night, I got to watch my kids in the morning until she wakes up and then I go and train clients. And then, you know, it's kind of like a hockey line shift. You're just back and forth, back and forth. It and is. I, yeah. We got real good at that tag teaming. <laughs> yeah. And I've told her, you know, cause I've been watching your stuff and I've been doing it here and there and it definitely works. Um, so I've been telling her, Hey man, listen to this guy, or maybe we got to come see you sometime. Um, but she has the time to do it. I think she just doesn't see the value in it. And she's always scared of sales. It's not really a sales face to face sales. Um, so I think I just got to, like you said, convince her and show her it works, I guess. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. You guys book tickets. I, I'll, I'll cover everything you need out here. That'd be a blast. Yeah. That'd be sweet. <laughs> yeah. So for the listeners, go ahead and give them your uh, contact info, your eBay, your Instagram, things like that. And we'll close this out, man. Yeah, if you just look up um, basically one word side hustle pros across all the platforms and you'll see see our names pop up. Uh, it's my wife, Trista, and I that run this thing. And then we've also got a couple of helpers. You can see them working in the back here. And I mean, that's the other part that I, we didn't touch much on is you, if you want to scale anything, you've got to have a team around you. Yeah. Like Trista and I, especially me, I was getting so burnt out because I have a control issue. I think few people do, but I had a really bad control issue, especially my business stuff, because I know how to do everything to a T. I'm very OCD with how I like things done. And I kept getting burnt out year after year until I finally sat down. I'm like, I need help. And yeah. so when you start to recruit people like uh, Trista and I do not enjoy doing photos and measuring. And so we have somebody back there right now doing photos and measuring and my electronics pile, which is in this corner, I do not enjoy the cleaning and the taking dirt out of the crevices of electronics and all that. I don't enjoy that part. That's not where I make my money. I make my money when I'm in stores buying more stuff. So I hired somebody for cleaning and testing and listing. And I'm able to spend more time sourcing or at home with my family. Yeah. And so having a team around you, that's how you scale. Yeah, that's huge. Because like we were saying earlier before we uh, started recording, you know, the editing videos, the shooting the videos, you know, adding all the graphics you know, podcasting and editing the podcast, all that stuff takes a lot of time. So if you have help, hire it out if you can, and uh, you'll probably grow even more and get better results as far as that too. So That's thanks. True. This is awesome, man. I appreciate you joining in. Hopefully a lot of people get value from it. I get value from you every day. So I'm sure they will if they go follow you. Um, yeah. Thanks a lot. Awesome, man. I appreciate everything. Thanks. All right, brother. Go kill the day. Yeah, got to go crush it today. <laughs> <laughs> See you. See you, buddy.